Okay, welcome to Weekday Somatics. I, I, I'm smiling because I think I, I always think I know something. That's not always true. I, I often think I know something. I think I have, I think I'm in charge. I think I've got it. I'm going to, I got it all figured out. I know what we're going to do. is pretty funny. So that's, that's, to me, that's one of the gifts that this kind of inquiry offers is the opportunity to really let go of the delusion uh, that is behind so much unnecessary suffering. It just comes from the clarity of observation of what actually is. Getting clearer on the, the distinction between the mental overlay and the actual reality So if it's comfortable, uh, I, uh, I, I, I'd invite you to explore sitting. We're going to, as usual, I, I, I think, we'll see what happens, but I, I probably, uh, let's have the, let's, let's set ourselves up so that we could inhabit this posture for the next 30 minutes. And so let's just take a moment to really get clear on, you know, on, on, our, on our present experience and how we might be inserting something unnecessary, how we might be trying to manipulate something about our experience by exerting too much effort. So as an example, I'm noticing that you can't, you can't see the, the full posture that I'm sitting in, but I, I'm sitting and I'm doing something with my legs. It's maybe, maybe it's just, it's maybe just a little too intense. Maybe I don't need that level of intensity. So I can just start to see what, what, what am I doing? What am I doing? How am I? straining and how am I, how am I, how am I not just straining at a, at a muscular level that too, I can observe that I can notice uh, strain in my thighs, for example, in the knees, but also at a subtler level, I can observe this strain, this whatever words we want to use for it. These are just pointers, so don't get hung up on the words. Just take a look at your own experience, but see, energetically, energetically, 
can, this is the question, can I become aware of any energetic strain, any strain to hold on to an idea of myself, my plans, my schemes for how I'm going to be more successful, how I'm going to use this time, how I'm going to use it to my advantage, how I'm going to better myself, how I'm going to fix myself, how I'm going to make any kind of unnecessary effort. And then the, my invitation is now, can we all give ourselves permission to really fully inhabit the, 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 the posture right now for us that gives us the clearest awareness of this edge between comfort and discomfort, where we can become aware of our habits of strain, of trying and striving and grasping and pulling and pushing and gripping and all the rest of it, armoring, seeking, and in order to do that, I find, I find it's helpful to explore where, where, just this edge, this edge of comfort and discomfort. What, what, I don't want to be slumped over. I don't want to be If at all possible, I don't want to just be collapsed. I want to actually be able to feel the sensations that are here in the clearest way possible. I want to be awake. I want to be present. I don't want to just try, I'm not seeking after comfort. I'm not chasing comfort. So that maybe just this little exploration now starts to shed some light on our habits of seeking our idea of comfort and the consequences of that. How we can use seeking out comfort and avoidance of discomfort as a kind of drug to keep ourselves numb So this edge that I'm talking about is it's neither comfort nor discomfort. But there's but the 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 mechanical mind can't help itself but try and label it, try and label the experience. It's gonna it's gonna it just can't help itself. It just has has to keep doing that until it doesn't. But so long as it does, rather than me get involved in shaming and blaming bad you mechanical mind, don't do that anymore. Or even worse, straining to, rest using restraint, okay? Using restraint to produce a kind of numbness and a, a, a false uprightness where then I say, Ooh, look at me, I'm doing it. Look, at, I'm succeeding, I'm sitting upright. Good for me, I'm making progress. So there's this edge where mechanical mind may, may still be churning, may still be saying this is pain, this is pleasure, this is pain, this is pleasure, this is good, this is bad, I'm getting it, I'm not getting it, pain, pleasure, getting it, not getting it. That's the edge, the edge where I don't 
really know. I just keep looking. I just keep observing. And I notice all of the unnecessary effort. Give yourself permission to ride that wave, to be right on the edge. And if you discover as I'm discovering that just a, it's just a little too intense, then ease up, ease up. So we're, we're sitting maybe, and if we're not, if you're not sitting because sitting may not be appropriate for you in this moment, then you're in whatever posture is appropriate for you. You could be sitting on a chair, you could be sitting on the floor, you could be sitting on a bed, you could be lying on the floor, you could be lying on a bed, you could be on your back, you could be on your stomach, you could be on your side, whatever is appropriate for you that allows you to be present to this edge. You may have your eyes open. You may have your eyes closed. I, I close my eyes because I find it easier. And we explored something recently, I don't remember if it was the last meeting or the meeting before that, but re recently we, we started to touch upon what I call tissue states. Don't get hung up on the terms, it's just, a, it's just something, some words to use to point to something. But it's something that we can be aware of, we can be aware of start to get clearer on differentiating what I'm, I'm calling the different states of soft tissue and also getting clear on the difference between the soft tissue and the skeletal structure. And I, I believe that the benefits of that actually speak for themselves, so to, so to speak. So rather than me trying to argue for or try to explain in advance what the benefits are, maybe we can all just take it on faith that uh, this is useful. I, I find actually that it's very profound. So I'd like to explore that a little bit more today and uh, I'd like to do that with the ears, around the ears. I'm, we're going, I'm going to suggest that we can touch our ears. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to uh, need to take the headset off. I don't think that should affect anything uh, except that I won't be able to hear in case somebody's speaking. So I'm going to take the headset off, which I strangely wear during this portion of the meeting. And if it's comfortable for you, then bring your left hand to your left ear and uh, you can See if you can do this. You could put your index finger on the 
well, before we do that, let's see if we, let's just grip gently, lightly grip the right ear lobe between the thumb and index finger. This is a lot to be aware of when we do this. So I'll point to some things that we can be aware of. One is, I'll put it in the first person as question, what, what am I doing with my right shoulder? Uh, rather my left shoulder, I, whatever. I think I've screwed things up. I'm using, I'm doing this with my left. Sorry if I have confused anybody. I'm doing it with my left. I'm putting my left fingers on my left earlobe and you can do it however you want, but that's, that's what I'm doing. So my instructions will be based on that. So then the question is, what am I doing with my left shoulder? So I noticed that I was lifting my left shoulder. And then do I need to do that? Is that helpful? Is that necessary for this action? How can I find out whether it's necessary or not? Well, I could see if I can soften the effort And if I can soften the effort and I can continue to gently clasp my left earlobe, then I know it's not necessary that I shrug my shoulder in order to do this. And I can also be aware of the what I'm sensing between my fingers. So this earlobe What do I feel there? Does it, do I feel anything? Does it feel numb? Does it feel soft? Is there any resistance in the earlobe? Can I feel any pull in the earlobe? Is there any tension in the earlobe? Is there any lumpiness or ropiness or whatever? Just notice what, do you notice? And then perhaps we could also become curious about whether that's what, whether what we're noticing there is is an is that an intrinsic quality of the earlobe? Or is it possible that I have been doing something unconsciously, habitually to produce a, a state in the earlobe of, of numbness, hardness, lack of ease, lack of flow? And can I direct my awareness in a way that allows for a softening of that. Don't strain here. So if you're finding that this is strenuous, there are a couple of things. One is you can always just pause and rest, rest the arm, let the hand come to rest in the lap if you need. Uh, the other is you, depending on what the edge is for you, so only you can know, but if you're noticing that it's strenuous, but you're able to ride that wave. You could also, without it, without pushing into even more strain, you could explore noticing where the strain is. Where do you where do you feel the strain? And here, I find it's a very rich opportunity for inquiry because I can start to observe the these what I often refer to as constellations these associations that they're very familiar I recognize them but I've been unconsciously aware of them up until now and now I, I can become consciously aware so I start to notice the ideas 
the images, the memories, the stories that I have about what the sensation is, what it means. So for example, I notice still the sensation in the shoulder. And I notice that I have a, a story, vague, but a story nonetheless, that says something about how this is hard. I have to try harder. I've got to hold it together, work more, keep trying, don't let go. And I, I have this sense, it's a false sense, it turns out, but I have this sense that I have to experience this in an, in an unpleasant way. And that I just have to bear this, I have to endure it. I have to en endure the unpleasantness. But the alternative is I can observe what it is that I'm doing and see if I can soften that. Okay, let's all slowly bring the arm to rest and notice how you do that. Notice whether that's a, there's, a, it, do you make some kind of sudden change that you then use as evidence that you've just brought the arm to rest so that you can say, ah, okay, I've changed state. Look, I did that. It happens so, it's, I believe it's such a common thing, so commonplace, this suddenness in state change that we don't recognize it unless we start to look for it. So really start to look and see. How do you know that you've made this change? How do you know that this change has taken place? Observe. So let's try try that again. We're going to bring the, hand, the left fingers to the ear lobe, the left ear lobe. And this time, the uh, I'll, I'll call our attention to the jaw. So here we are, we've got the, this gentle tug, gentle, very gentle. We're not, we're not trying to pull the earlobe off. We're just, just a gentle tug on the earlobe so that we can experience that. And then notice how you can become aware of the jaw. You don't need to think about it. You can just be aware, be, just be aware of the sensations. Be aware, what are you doing? What are you doing in the jaw? You clenching the jaw, maybe? Does this the, do the fingers on the earlobe help to clarify that? Can you soften the jaw? Can you feel that spaciousness where the jaw and the ear come together? And can you continue to allow for that spaciousness, the spaciousness inside the ear, around the ear, behind the ear, and into the jaw, maybe even inside the mouth, as you slowly release the hand down. 
and see if you can do this in a way where you can remain aware of the space in the ear and the jaw and the mouth, maybe the neck, shoulder, the arm and the hand. And if you remain aware of that space, notice how that maybe changes the way in which you hold yourself. If you don't indulge the habit of sudden state change, but you remain aware in that transition and you remain aware of the space and you remain aware of the impulses to strain, to reassert the habit of clenching, tension, numbness, and so forth but you don't indulge that habit, then what's that like? It's not like anything, it's just this, isn't it? All right, let's try that with the right hand and the right ear. So let's, and again, this is only if it's appropriate for you, so don't strain. But if it's appropriate, then bring the right hand to the right earlobe. And if you're like me and you've got a bunch of hair there, you might have to move it around. But then find a, a way to just gently grip the earlobe, the right earlobe with the right index finger and thumb. And notice what it is that you can become aware of that's un unnecessary effort. Can you become aware of any unnecessary strain or effort in the throat? In the jaw? behind the ear, above the ear, inside the ear, in front of the ear, the shoulder. So it's a lot to be aware of, but isn't, I find it amazing that it's possible to remain aware the it become uh, my experience of it is that it's very open then remain remaining aware of that release or soft softness or spaciousness that may have opened up a little bit. See if you can slowly release the hand while maintaining that softness. So observe for the compulsive habits trying to reassert themselves of clenching, making unnecessary effort, straining, leaning, gripping, pulling, and the rest of it. And just see if you can remain soft and open as you release the hand down.
Okay, now well, let's see if we can let's explore this as a possibility. I don't know if this will be appropriate for you or not, but you, we'll see. So let's see if, it, if maybe we could use both hands to gently grip each earlobe. So right earlobe with the right hand and left earlobe with the left hand. And once the hands, the fingers are gently tugging on the earlobes, maybe we can start to notice that we can soften and release the back, the upper back, allowing the shoulder blades to release. Maybe we recognize something about this that's similar to something that we explored recently, last week. So maybe we could allow the forearms to come to rest together in front. Maybe not. We're not pushing anything, but that's just a possibility. And then that may be plenty. That may be all that's necessary. But for those who are interested in this possibility, we could also explore this further. So with this awareness now, hopefully, of a softness and spaciousness in the earlobes, around the ears, the scalp, the jaw, shoulders, maybe even the, the neck. We might maybe become aware of that spaciousness. We can explore a, a possibility. I'm going to, don't move yet, but I'm going to describe it and then we'll do the movement. So without changing the orientation, the orientation, without, without changing the relationship of the head to the trunk, the torso, the shoulders. So keeping that same relationship, we're going to explore turning, moving the body in a way that the head turns to the right. So let me, we're not moving yet, but I'm, I'll just say that again or differently so that hopefully we can be clear on the, on the, on the suggestion, which is keeping the head in its relationship to the torso the same. So the, in this case, the head and torso are presumably if we're sitting doing as I'm doing, then the head and torso are both facing forward. Keeping that same relationship between the head and the torso so that the spine is, uh, well, the cervical spine, the, the neck is not twisting. Can we turn, can we do something so that the head turns to the right. Now, you may understand that right away or maybe you don't understand it, but just let's explore that possibility. So keeping the neck, the face, the jaw relaxed, keeping the shoulders relaxed. Now this might be a small movement. Small and clear is way better than big and unclear. So it says me, that's my opinion. (laughs) 
and then slowly come to center. And then see if you can do that to the left. Remember, don't strain. So if you need to rest the arms, you can rest the arms. And then slowly to center. Do that a couple more times if, if appropriate. So slowly turning to the right and then returning to center. Slowly turning to the left and then returning to center. Slowly, so just at your own pace. Do that several more times. And as you do, notice the habits of strain that try to creep in. Can you remain aware of the space and softness in and around the ears, into the jaw and mouth? and shoulders as you turn in this way, may be a very, very, very small movement. It may just be an imagined movement. That's okay. And then slowly release the hands and arms. Can you do this in a way that you can remain aware continuously so that it's not a sudden shift? Can you allow for the shoulders to remain soft as the arms and hands come to rest. We'll just, rem we'll just sit here for a, just a short while, just an, a minute or so. And become aware of the, what's different. Uh, this has got to be different. It's very different for me. I notice that there's a mismatch between my idea of myself and the present experience of myself. My idea of myself has, has its shoulders pulled back. The actuality of myself of my experience presently is it's different. So my mechanical mind wants to judge it as bad, undesirable, problematic. says, I'm hunched over. And I may well be. That's, that's certainly a possibility, but rather than indulging my usual habits of correction, so-called correction, I'm just remaining still and I'm observing for any unnecessary strain. If I become aware of unnecessary strain, I can gently soften, but it's not an adjustment. I'm not fixing anything. And it's not a sudden movement. It's slow, subtle, and it's only a release of effort rather than exerting effort.
Now, if your eyes are closed, then I invite you to slowly begin to explore opening the eyes and either way, whether your eyes are opened or closed, we're going to transition from the formal somatic inquiry. And so just be aware of that transition and see, can you remain aware? Is that a possibility? It is, <laughs> it is, but can you, can you, can you discover that? Can I discover that presently? Can I actually, rather than saying, well, I know I've done it in the past and that's good enough. Can I actually just be present rather than patting myself on the back and congratulating myself for having done things successfully in the past? Can I be present to the actuality of what is? Can this experience be totally fresh? I notice my mind says, well, I've done this plenty of times. I've opened the eyes plenty of times. Of course I can do it. It's, I'll just, I'll sort of check out as I do this thing, this mechanical, mechanical slowness. See that it's tricky, learns how to do mechanical slowness. But can I really be present to the whole thing so that I can notice the mechanical slowness, so that I can be aware of all the mechanical habits? Take your time. For those who are here live, we'll continue with the Q&A in just a moment. And uh, I'm going to end this recording of the, the public portion of the meeting. So for anybody who's watching the recording, thanks for joining.